Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the RFP for a cafeteria for the city of St. Louis. Uh, my name is Nodrick Tankins, and I am pleased to be here, and thank you all for joining. Uh, so we will go ahead and call this meeting to order at 10.04, Thursday, July 11th, 2024. And as I mentioned, my name is Nodrick Tankins. I'm special assistant to the comptroller of St. Louis City, and I'm the chair of this uh, selection committee. And um, we can all take a moment, a pre brief moment to introduce ourselves. Um, so, uh, Shana. Hi, I'm Shana Morton, and I am the executive assistant to the comptroller. Good morning, Shana. Thank you for joining. Ms. Ingracia. Good morning, everybody. Christine Ingracia representing the president's office. Thank you, Ms. Ingracia. Good morning. Mr. Bailey. Good morning. I'm Kevin Bailey, special assistant to the mayor, representing the mayor's office. Thank you for joining and good morning again. Uh, and we have one selection uh, committee member missing today. Uh, his name is Monroe Smith. He will be joining us for future meetings, but in, in his absence, I'll go ahead and introduce our non-voting member, uh, Mr. Morrow. Yeah, uh, my name is Nick Morrow. I'm an attorney with the uh, city councilor's office. I'm in the transactions unit. I'm not a committee member, but I'm here to assist with any procedural questions. Thank you, Mr. Morrow. Good morning and welcome. So let's start off with just a brief overview of why we're here. Uh, hopefully you all have, well, you all did receive a copy of the RFP draft and we're asked to review it before uh, this meeting. So I'm just gonna start with uh, the project's overview and it uh, states by popular demand, the office of the comptroller is requesting proposals for qualified vendors to operate innovative food service concepts in two busy city government buildings in downtown St. Louis. Uh, those buildings referenced there would be um, City Hall and building 1520 Market Street. This request for proposals uh, is to promote and ensure the fairest, most efficient means to obtain the benefit of the most qualified, responsive, and responsible proposal. Vendors interested in submitting a proposal in response to this RFP will be referred to as respondents or operators. Uh, just to expand on that a little bit, um, there has been much talk about a cafeteria or a food option in downtown St. Louis. We have had one in the past for many years. And that's why the first um, beginning of that statement was by popular demand. There have been many conversations in many departments uh, discussing the need uh, for uh, a good food option uh, at the city. So um, our second agenda item is going to be to review the RFP and have a discussion. So I just want to ask um, generally, do you all have any questions about the materials in the RFP or anything specifically that you'd like to uh, have a conversation about. I have a few questions. Am I okay to go ahead? Yes, ma'am. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Um, so the spaces, um, there's a the mezzanine location in City Hall on the second floor. What, um, where are you envisioning that snack cart or mobile coffee cart to be set up? I think that is all open for discussion. Um, at this point, there is no uh, perceived, you know, location for that that is better than any other. Um, so that that's a point for us to decide, uh, you know, as we move forward. So do and you I, have a recommendation? I, I don't work in City Hall. Nodrick, I can actually uh, help provide some context here. Um, yes, sir. So that uh, is actually a typo in the under 
sub point A on the scope of services, that um, mezzanine level location is actually in 1520 Market uh, Street. The opening would be right by the SLDC offices. Um, and then the coffee cart would be either right there on that mezzanine level or in the, there's some chair, there's some tables down in the uh, lobby level on the, on the ground floor. And that is where the prospective uh, coffee cart would be located. Okay, great. Yeah, I was just going to say sometimes, because the second floor is where the board is and it can get kind of crowded up here, um, depending on committee hearings and things like that. Is there a reason that in 1520, it just wouldn't be located on the first floor like it has been in the past? Well, the uh, logic of, uh, or my thinking in the proposal was that we would have both options available. Um, so the goal uh, is to seek out, let's say a vendor for coffee, for example, uh, on that first floor at building 1520 market, but also to uh, be seeking out a vendor to run the actual cafeteria that is located on the second floor of 1520 market. So okay. both options and the, uh, the vendor does not have to be the same vendor in my thinking. Um, you know, we could have multiple, let's say programs or projects that come out of this. Okay. Um, and then how are you envisioning the jurors accessing the kitchen at City Hall since it's in the basement? Well, I don't, I'm not aware of how that has been uh, done in the past. Um, does anyone have any more insight and scope onto how the cafeteria operated in the basement in the past? Well, I have some, I've been there 30 years, <laughs> so uh so what are you asking you're asking how do the jurors get into the basement right yeah there's, I mean, that's for, that's an employee entrance only i'm not i just i yeah in in my in experience it's only been city hall employees that that use that location i just uh, want to say that there was that that had been thought out and discussed with like perhaps the marshals or things like that um i know jurors used to come there uh many years ago uh i don't know when pam was there whether or not the jurors came but i imagine so so in the past they have come to uh city hall and i guess they could come through the uh you know the mayor's circle that area and come in and go downstairs yeah. Okay. Would there be any, let's say, problems um, with them just coming in the main interest and going down the elevator? No, shouldn't be. Okay, so yeah, I just wanted to go ahead. make sure that there wasn't any sort of security type issue since it's, yeah, that entrance down there is not particular. There's just one marshal. Um, right, that makes sense. Um, perhaps we could you know maybe flesh this out a little bit how to functionally make that happen if the jurors are going to be escorted you know perhaps the marshals say who's going to the cafeteria and bring them all over and are able to get a you know more streamlined access to the building uh, that's a potential let's say workaround uh, another potential option that i uh, that comes to my mind is I know that there are alternative entrances to the basement area that are just locked right now. And perhaps that can be opened up. I, I believe there's an entrance that comes from the outside directly into the back of the cafeteria. Uh, yeah. And at I don't one think point it was accessed that way. Yeah, they would have to have a guard. So I think they might be um, low staff. That's why um, even the the rear entrance near the parking lot, that's why sometimes during the day that's actually closed. I think staffing issues. So that's, I think it'd be a good idea to discuss with the marshals um, past procedures regarding, uh, 
you know, jurors or people accessing the uh, cafeteria. Yeah, I don't think it needs to hold up the RFP. I just wanted to make sure that it was something that they were aware of. Um, and then I was curious if there was any opportunity to add language about the possibility of offering um, healthy options or um, a focus on providing like local, using local um, food or local farmers or vendors. Not that it's a requirement. I think it would just be nice to have those options um, if the vendor thinks they would be able to provide those. Mm -hmm. um, so my answer to that is yes, we definitely want to allow for healthy food options. That's part of the main purpose of having a potential cafeteria is to offer that to the employees. Um, and the, the current thinking is also um, to offer smaller, let so-called mom and pop organizations to maybe get exposure by working with the city and potentially it could be some sort of um, joint venture like I'm just throwing this out here but imagine a larger uh, vendor just say like a Chick-fil-A partners with a smaller vendor that does tacos or whatever and then that way, the smaller one can get a little bit of um, it may perhaps um, access to the industry, access to uh, larger economies of scale, for example, access to training on how to run a larger operation and get the exposure of being a vendor in the city. And we've even considered um, in that type of scenario where we have a large vendor potentially partnering with a smaller one um, or operating, for example, out of the same space, uh, you know, using the 1520 market location as an example, where you have a vendor on the first floor in the uh, entrance and a vendor in the actual cafeteria that mm -hmm. one of them is rotated out on some type of periodic basis. So perhaps the first floor vendor stays for okay. a year yeah, and rotates yeah. through. Cool. That makes sense. So we are definitely able to, to update that language. So thank you for okay. that question. Yeah, of course. I've got two more. Sorry. Um, I was curious um, if you were going to put a dollar amount in there, just so people know, have some general idea about what the city is expecting to be able to pay for this. Um, so you don't get a bunch of responses that are way off the mark? Well, we can definitely add that language. Um, we left it open because we weren't sure what would be appropriate for a dollar amount uh, and what situation that we would be addressing with a dollar amount. So a coffee cart is different than running the entire cafeteria. Mm -hmm. So how do we place that amount on there? Um, you know, so I'm definitely open to adding any language like that if, if it's appropriate, but I'm not sure if that would uh, increase or decrease participation. You okay. know, if a larger vendor, for example, says, well, they're only going to pay us X amount of dollars, that ain't worth my time. You know, why even look at it and read it and do a proposal? Right. I guess to like counter that is just what if, I mean, if you have $500,000 to do this or $100,000, whatever the amount is, and all of everybody responds that it's going to cost more. So you can't, then you have no RFPs. It's, I don't have like, it's not a make it or break it thing for me. It's just, I think, something to consider. Does anyone else have a, a thought on that? So, okay. Nadric, have you checked uh, what they used to charge in the past? As far as the fee at, at City Hall? Mm -hmm. Yes. I do not know those numbers right now, no. So that would be really good to look into because um, I think they only... Whatever it was, yeah, check into that because I they did pay a fee, but it wasn't.
very high. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I can, I can try to add some, some background here too. Um, it was intentionally left. Um, compensation was intentionally left out of this current draft of the RFP uh, because the spaces are in need of pretty substantial capital improvements. Um, and so the thinking was to, um, to promote or to um, incentivize responses um, to, the, to the fullest extent possible was, was to remain flexible on that point. Um, and, and so um, depending on the level of, of capital improvement that the vendor can contribute, um, then that would be part of the negotiated amount as well. So we're, let me understand this. So we're expecting for the vendors or whoever respond to these RFPs to actually do the rehab of these spaces or the city is going to uh, Correct. offer some sort Cor of. Correct. I think um, my understanding on that is that the city is open to offering some, um, some funding toward the capital improvement, but that it would also uh, potentially be the responsibility of the vendor to bring the, the space up to date and function um, based on their needs. And then um, the, the vendor would receive compensation by charging, you know, a fee to, to the public for their, per, you know, and employees for their purchases. Um, and then um, anything else in terms of how much funding the city can provide or a monthly rental fee paid to the city was all uh, open to negotiation based on the proposal. That makes sense, Ms. Bailey. I understand now. So what are your thoughts about it? It, it looks like you have a comment. Yeah, that's a lot to be asking somebody. Um, it's not their space uh, to invest that type of money into our space. Um, I'm even thinking about just like equipment. Uh, I'm sure some of the stuff I know in 1520 is probably not even salvageable, uh, you know? And so that whole entire space will have to be renovated and putting uh, on whoever is responsible uh, for doing that, putting, you know, uh, that type of uh, uh, money and, and, and equipment in could get very, very, very costly. Uh, what if the relationship doesn't work out well? Do they take their equipment back? It, I think if it's ours, we'll then have more of a control over what can go in that space, what that number would look like um, as far as charging. I mean, um, yeah, charging to rent the space or whatever. But yeah, I'm, that's a lot. And then I I'm did have a question um, also, um, whoever, had to, um, accepts or, or is selected for this process, I mean, for this uh, purpose, they will only have operating rights for that specific location. Meaning if, and I, and I love the concept of having one vendor at uh, downstairs uh, uh, 1520, one vendor upstairs outside SLDC and possibly another one. I love all that. City Hall is, um, is a, is a um, beast in itself and what I'm getting at I, I remember the days when the little the, the snack shop or whatever was open in the basement they will only have access to that snack shop because I know a lot of uh, cultural events and different events happen definitely at City Hall in the rotunda people um yeah you know, for a minute there were monthly different uh, 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 um, various vendors coming in that wouldn't a contract or a uh, um, a deal with this whatever vendor that takes over the city hall uh, cooking area that wouldn't affect what happens in the rotunda, will it? I I would say that you know generally logically thinking that it's potentially um, going to be some sort of maybe conflict or uh, you know um, space where there's what's the word competition uh, for, for those dollars. Um, but I think we've written the RFP with the language that would accommodate those type of situations where, for example, 
one of our conversations centered around hiring a sous chef who would be in charge of getting different vendors to come through on different periodic basis. So to uh, encompass the scenario you just laid out, if those vendors are going to be coming into City Hall, the sous chef could potentially schedule that with whoever's throwing that event and they use the actual space. Yeah, I, I don't agree with that. No, I think you... whoever has the, yeah, I'm just saying whoever has access to that space, uh, I mean, since we're using City Hall, that space in that kitchen downstairs, they should have access to that space, not basically authority over the entire building. There's there's a lot of events that happen uh, in that building. People rent the rotunda out for different things. I don't think they should have to go through whoever we've contracted to through or with uh, in that cafeteria area for the entire building. Okay, I'm not sure I understand what you're saying. The cafeteria is in the basement. They would just be in the basement. No, if um, like for instance, uh, during Hispanic um, uh, Heritage Month, you know, different ving uh, vendors come in. Uh, they you know, different offices or whatever will have somebody to come in, or they'll meet with uh, Travis Hauser and 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 have that space uh, in the rotunda for their event or right. for whatever it is. Um, I understand the part, the uh, the uh, the professionalism and everything and the creativity of having a sous chef, but that individual should have control over whatever happens in that cafeteria area in the bottom of City Hall, not the entire um, building. Correct. It, the way I'm um, understanding what you're saying is, is that the rotunda or the open common area can be congested because of these vendors coming through and you don't want them to potentially have access to the entire building that could potentially interrupt city functions. Is that right. some, what you're saying? So yeah. I, I agree with you there. And in this scenario, what, what I'm describing is that that sous chef, if, if that was the option, you know, that was selected would take those vendors that come through the special events from Mr. Uh, from Travis and move that to the location in the basement. Like we know it's been scheduled out. They're going to come through. We're giving the city multiple options to have ethnic food this time, have tacos this time, have pizza this time, but to move it from the rotunda to the basement area so that it's not a conflict with city um, functions. So would you be in favor of, of I don't think that Kevin description? Said. What's that? I, I I think Kevin is, I, I agree with Kevin. I think that the cafeteria vendor would be in the basement separate from some of the other things that, that happen. Um, I think that's typically how we've done it. Like there's no, if somebody wanted to partner with the cafeteria people, I suppose they could do that. But I, I think that, people like being in the rotunda um, for those special type events. And, you know, like our office does that, you know, the mayor's office does it, the comptroller's office, or the um, uh, license collector's office does that. And I, I think that they like to be set up in, in the rotunda because there's just more space and it's a special type of event. It's like a one-off outside of just going to grab lunch every, uh, every day on a regular basis. Yeah. So I understand. I'm confused. So you're talking about the com the cafeteria in the basement. Are you saying, Nodrick, that they would bring up like a cart to the rotunda area? Is that what you're saying? No, that's that is isn't what I was describing. So I everything I would stay in the Mr. Basement. Bailey was saying that those special events that are happening currently are sometimes an issue because no, they're, they're not adds more people to the space. No, 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 it's not an issue at all. No, they it, it's the ambiance of being in the rotunda and all that. It, it adds to people's events. I just don't want um, whoever accepts or selected for this RFP to have control over anything that happens throughout the building. That individual should control that cafeteria space in the um, 
in the basement of City Hall, and that's it. I agree with, uh, with with Christina. I mean, excuse me, all the women in Gracia. If she, if, if they want to partner with the uh with that vendor, that's fine. But if not, they're they should have no uh, bearings on what uh what occurs. That's just my suggestion, though. And and I uh -huh. wholeheartedly agree with you there. In every scenario of this RFP, the least space is the least space. Yeah, so I don't think they've we ever come the up to cafeteria the cafeteria basement to yeah. a vendor. That's all they have access to. That's what their right. lease is going to say. That's right. all you have control over. Yeah. Okay. And, the, and the 30 years up in there, I don't think they've ever come up to the rotunda. I think Pam tried one time to have a cart and someone complained. And so then she had to take the cart back downstairs. But that was not a part of her lease is to come up and be in the return. I don't think I've ever seen that other than that. Yeah. Okay. So sorry for misunderstanding what, what you were saying. So the answer to, to your question again is the least space would be the least space. That's where they're authorized to be. And that's what they're paying for. They should not be in other areas of City Hall or 1520 um, making sales unless you know it's a special situation and it's been agreed that this is authorized that you can do that. Sure. Um, my last question is, uh, there's a mention of startup costs possibly being available. I was curious where those were coming from and how much was available. At this point, I don't have answers to that. Um, it would definitely have to be a budgeted item uh, in, in conversations with the comptroller and um, the legal department uh, about it. The uh, one frame work to put the RFP in is that now we may go with the smaller vendor, the cart, um, you know, healthy options that are fast and quick and easy, and then also long-term fund the restoration that's going to be the huge capital improvement. Once we find out those numbers, um, I have been asking other city departments to give me estimates of repairing this or buying that or buying this uh, but what I found out is that just the way the city's aligned and how the bids go out and whatever, that you kind of have to have an RFP to even get that analysis done of how much money is this going to cost. And we need to know that, you know, what the total heat rehab cost of that cafeteria in 1520 market is before we could budget for it, before we could say this much money is available for it. Um, but I'm aware uh, that this uh, item is requested by many people uh, in the city. And it wasn't actually the comptroller's office that idea that's birthing this project. It was the mayor's office and the legal department who, you know, put this back on the radar and said, let's go forward and do it. So with that being the case, if the mayor mayor's office is potentially on board with it, that perhaps there's a way to get those potential funds in the future, that it's not an unknown quantity um, and maybe not, you know, a big hill to climb to say, you know, we need these structural and engineering rehabs anyway. Uh, like Mr. Bailey said, perhaps it is the responsibility of the city to pay for the hoods, you know, for the you know, yeah. the, the safety of the space and not the actual vendor. But that's part of the goal of the RFP is to find out how sensitive vendors are to a capital contribution. Okay. It makes me a little nervous to say that there are startup costs available without knowing specifically where they're coming from or what the amount is. Um, I don't think it's unheard of. I mean, a lot of restaurants have to build out the spaces that they lease that that's not atypical. Um, but I would, I would assume also in, in terms of costs, like you could work with our facilities department, um, to at least have a ballpark about what you think upgrades need to be. 
Um, or to BPS it. too, I think. Right. BPS. And I, and I agree with you both on that. They, and I've they spoken upgraded. to facilities and yeah, BPS, they, and they both oh. told me it's above their scope. It's too big of a potential project for them to just eyeball it without the official process in place. That's what I was told that they they're not willing to just go and say that's five thousand, that's ten thousand without having the actual subject matter experts come and look. And that takes it's a higher standard, basically a higher threshold to get that information. Um, so I agree with you, Miss Ingracia, that we need to find out those questions. Um, I'm not sure the mechanism of how we find it out internally without doing a completely separate RFP to to get that info. Uh, and so, again, part of, I believe, the thought process and leaving this particular RFP as broad as it is, as you just mentioned, a restaurateur has the capability of doing that assessment and telling us how much it's going to cost or how much, you know, they even would have in their potential budget to pay for it themselves or the request that they have of how much they need from the city to build it up. Um, so that that's one avenue to of completion. And sorry, uh, Shauna, go ahead. I, I recognize you to speak. Um, oh, sorry about that. Yes. So I I think it was maybe 10 years ago. It's been a, a while, but they did redo that cafeteria in the city hall basement from what it used to be. There was a, a gentleman and his wife that was there for like 30 years, a really long time. And then I think when Pam came in or it wasn't too long ago that they redid that space and painted and got all new items in there uh so i mean i would think facilities would have like the markup or you know how did they go about that how did they i do actually have the background on that and it it wasn't facilities who actually did it it was the vendor who did it they spent their own hard-earned cash okay. and put all that equipment in that city basement and paid for the paint and the tile and all of that um they did it yeah in concert with facilities, facilities is actually right next door. So they knew what was going on and was able to facilitate the vendor getting the light fixtures installed, but the vendor paid for all of those, um, you okay. know, repairs. Yeah. Uh, and when I read that original RFP from that era, that's what it said. It said that they, they would be wholly responsible City was not taking any liability on anything beyond the utilities and the structure itself. Uh, and that's why we're kind of this time saying we're willing to come up with some money if need be. You know, just to be frank about 1520, the city's going to have to put some money up to get that cafeteria going. It's a known quantity, and we will definitely work long term to do that. Um, you know, but it would be a great help if a restaurateur who has that capability can tell us um, through their own analysis. Well, in my experience, it cost us one hundred and fifty thousand dollars for a size, you know, a project of this size, and then um, we can go from there. Yeah, I, I think I would be more comfortable if we knew how much the city had to offer and where that money is coming from before we just put something in there that says that startup costs are available. And the only other thing I had was just that um, vendors is spelled incorrectly in a few different places. So just take a peek at that. And thanks for letting me weigh in. Oh, no problem. You are more than welcome to speak as much or as little as you want. We're here to get your feedback. Um, all ideas are good ideas uh, in this context. And you all have been here at the city for much longer than I have. So you definitely have much more uh, context in how they think these things happen and what's appropriate.
Do we have any other questions on the RFP or discussion uh, points? S silence, I'm going to say that's a no. Uh, so the go ahead, Mr. Bailey. No, I was saying I'm good. I, I didn't realize I had muted myself again. Oh, okay. So the only thing I wanted to particularly uh, talk about uh, is beyond what we've already discussed is the actual timeline for the RFP. Um, since Ms. Ingracia is saying that she, you know, recommends that we find out some answers uh, to the, her questions before we put this out there. Do you all think this timeline is still um, appropriate by putting the request out Monday? Or should we take a, a little more time, get those answers um, before we move forward? If possible, maybe we can just push it out like a week and meet again and approve an RFP once you're able to get some of the answers and make some of the changes we discussed today. Anyone have a different viewpoint or a different comment they'd like to make? I agree with Ingracia. I agree as well. So do I. Thank you. Thank you all for that. So um, with that being said, then that looks like we are going to push the date from the 15th to the following Monday, pending answers to our questions, correct? Yeah, and if you want to put something on the calendar now while we're all here, I'm happy to look at my calendar. Um, I would love to do that, but we know how that goes. We'll be two hours trying to figure out a time <laughs> that we can all be there. Um, so let's uh so you know, I'll be, follow up with that. What's that? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'll be out. Let's see, I'll be back <laughs> from my trip on the 22nd. Um, so I'm available to meet that week of the 22nd. Okay. I am too. I'm Monday, good as well. Yeah, Monday and Thursday are wide open for me right now. Yeah. So the 22nd is good. And then if we all agree, you can still post it on the 23rd or 24th. Okay, well, Miss Ingrassi, I think it was easier than I thought. <laughs> we are all free. <laughs> this is the, the easiest, yeah. Let's just that, to do it. Okay. Um, so I'm available on the 22nd. I'll be back. Okay, so I'm uh, tentatively going to say yes we we can all meet that day or that week but I'm going to follow up with you all shortly and, and ask and make sure um, we're missing one member now and he wasn't able to meet today so I just want to verify that we're all able to do that before you know making that the day or time but the week of the 22nd is noted and then would that move everything else? That Correct. Yeah. We we just be looking at pushing all those dates back a week, unless you all have further insight or want you know want to discuss it more. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, one second. I lost my screen. Oh, are you all seeing my calendar? I'm not I can sure. See your calendar and your email. Okay. Mm -hmm. There we go. Sorry about that. All right. Um, next agenda item. So uh, we're we're not voting to approve the RFP today because we do want to make some adjustments. And uh, this actually will be beneficial for the whole group because uh, Mr. Mon Monroe Smith sh should potentially be able to join us to vote on accepting the draft or not. So let's, um, hey, uh, Mr. Morrow, 
do we need to entertain a motion to adjust this agenda and remove voting? No, you um, you do not need to do that. You do not need uh, a vote to approve the RFP. Um, it's just tabled for now. Um, uh, I do think it would be helpful to talk about solicitation methods. You want to have that discussion now or in two weeks? I, so, so I think you can you can talk about it now, and it would be helpful, and then you can vote on it. Um, along with, with the RFP next time. What page is that mentioned? Do you know off the top of your head? I do not believe it says the um, any kind of solicitation method in the RFP itself. So um, if you would if you would prefer we you know the, the committee can talk about those uh, next time. Um, there's yeah, no um, in the RFP. Um, I don't think it needs to be in the RFP, but I'm happy to talk about it this time or or next next meeting. Either one works. Let's go ahead and right. give five minutes to it if if everybody's amenable to that. Um, what are the normal ways of you know notifying the public? I know we post to our website, but are there additional avenues we go that are would be appropriate and uh, efficient in 2024. I think it would be helpful to probably send it to the restaurant association. And there's also um, a small business group um, that's run by Danny Eichenhorst. I'm happy to forward it to her or send you her contact information. Um, they represent more sort of like mom and pop shops, possibly the Hispanic chamber, um, some of the more immigrant focused organizations. I'm happy to pass contact info to you um, if you'd like. I would love to entertain those, um, those contacts. Uh, Nick, do you see any potential problem or conflicts if we notify individual organizations in that manner uh, versus just the general public notice somewhere? No, there's no issue with that. That's okay. And it's a good idea to, you know, next time you can have a, a kind of a tentative list in place of, of suggested uh, solicitation methods ready for the, um, for the committee to review. Beyond what Ms. Ingracias has just mentioned, I would think that Facebook and Instagram and um, LinkedIn would be available and appropriate. Um, I'm not sure if they've been used in the past, but uh, I see the mayor post every day two or three times. So um, that's potentially a way to get eyes on uh, the RFP as well. So that's just a comment. You all are can comment if you'd like. Otherwise, let's um... like magazines, maybe like Sauce or I mean, is that I don't know. Just mm -hmm. different magazines, St. Louis food magazines, maybe put that in there. Yes, ma'am. I think those are all good ideas. I do have a question about. Um, Paying for the ad, though, or do we, you know, how do we do that? Is there a budget to, and how much is that budget to pay, you know, for magazine space um, or, you know, a, a blurb in a local publication? Do you know, Ms. Morton? Um, not sure. We could ask Jason. Oh, yeah. yeah, if you have a budget for it, it would be in the comptroller's office. Right. All right. Okay. Does anyone have anything else? Well, if no one has any other comments, um, I think it's appropriate. Oh, go ahead. You're on mute. Ms. Ingracia, you're on mute. I'm sorry. I was somebody else was talking to me in my office. I apologize. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thought you were getting my attention. All right. Well, at this moment, then, I will entertain a motion to adjourn our meeting and to I make a motion I'm sorry, to adjourn until possibly the 22nd of July. Second. Second. Okay. And then let's all uh, vote. I, uh, Nick, can you do a roll call, please? Sure, one second. Okay. Um, Nodrick Tankins? Aye. Christine Ingracia? Aye. Kevin Bailey? Aye. Shanna Morton? Aye. That's four mm -hmm. aye votes. Motion carries. Uh, thank you all for joining, and I hope to see you the week of the 22nd.